Legion, Season 1, Episode 3, Thoughts. This episode is called Chapter 3. Another episode I love, spoilers for everything X-Men leading up to and including this episode. Let's dive right in. And... Yeah, we see that at Summerland they have the... What's the word? Um, the, the showers are not separated by gender. Which, yeah, neat little world building detail. And, yeah, we hear the, the story, the, the woodcutter, which, yeah, that is, that is an actual, I've heard that before, that, that, yeah, that is an actual fairy tale. And, yeah, we see that the, the little, I still don't remember what those are called, um, I'm gonna go with worms, you know. Now they're being like put in in Amy's skin to to get answers out of her. Just, yeesh. and yeah. As soon as the the um, as soon as Melanie has heard the entire woodcutter story, you know she she yeah pours the the coffee bag in and you know asks to to hear the the story again you know it's it's clear and it's explained later you know she just she likes listening to yeah it's it's not really the yeah she doesn't mind hearing it over and over because of whose voice it is and Let's see. Yeah, and they, they talk about, you know, because they just don't have time, because Amy has been captured, they can't go, you know, piece by piece. You know, they, they have to only do the big events, which, yeah, you know, considering how many problems they already had. I'm, I'm not saying it's, like, a bad idea. You, you understand why they're doing it, but... The audience, you know, we we know this is not gonna go well because we've seen how many problems they had from the the you know even going piece by piece. You know, they they were trying to go slow uh, before in in episode two, and they were still really struggling. And, yeah, I, I like the thing about, you know, the, um, you, you control amazing powers. Control might not be the right word for, still really great snark. And, yeah, they, they go into the, they're, they're inside the, the memories, getting real Psychonauts vibes, loving it. And... The, um, yeah, we see, you know, yeah, David and, and Lenny were, you know, smoking weed, and the, is that too vague of a reference? They were doing drugs, and, and Phyllis comes in, and, you know, she points out there are people coming over, you can't be, you know, this is not okay, and, yeah, Lenny just always, maybe, hypothetically, theoretically, at some point, she will say something on this show that isn't just absolutely amazing. It hasn't happened so far. I, I, if it ever happens, I'll let you know. And, and, yeah, you know, she, yeah, Phyllis brought cake because there are people coming over, you know, it's that's what it's for. And Lenny just, like, shoves her, you know, grabs it, shoves her fingers and starts licking, you know, because she's, you know, she's high. She's She's got the munchies or something, you know. She's not thinking about what's proper and just, yeah, really, yeah, very, very effective because you can see how, yeah, that's, 
obviously that that caused a, a fight between David and and Phyllis Philly. And uh, yeah, the yellow-eyed demon makes another appearance, and then <laughs> yeah, it takes them a second to be like, oh oh no, this is the the real world, and it's like so David teleported three people what, what do they say 600 meters or something through walls you know uh, again this is like this is a very intense level of power this is not just yeah even, even for mutants this is very intense and <laughs> we get some more great snarky lines and some more great like just what's the word um just you know great relationship moments between sid and, and david so um mother yeah i have one of those and let's see yeah and and yeah he mentions he still remembers her long hair from when he was her and he sometimes feels like he wants to brush it out of his face and and stuff like that and then they talk about you know well I mean I was you for two hours I didn't look any more than I needed to <laughs> And Sid, you know, I, I knew the moment she said it. Oh, she's she's screwing with him. There's no way that is BS of the highest order. But yeah, she claims that. Yeah, that's. She claims that she had a similar experience, but she went significantly further. And David actually believes her at first, which is kind of adorable. And yeah, and and she mentions you know it does I I don't think of it as my body you know and she talks about all the different people she swapped bodies with and said you know I'm still me it's still my soul which I that it, it's again one of these great little because that's that's probably how you have to think about it if you lived in a world of mutants and you were yeah, swapping bodies with people just from physical contact. Yeah, like it's either gonna just you're you're not gonna be okay at all, or you think something like that, you know. But it is also, yeah, you know, no one should have to, you know, say my body isn't really my body. And yeah, so they're gonna. They're gonna do more tests on him, and you know David is is like un uncomfortable, and and then Carrie, with a K, offers to knock him out, which I can imagine set off some of the fan base. I I don't think Amber Mithunder has to twist. There's there's some people she she wouldn't have to twist people's arms in order to just I I love that her character is just consistent I, I you know again maybe this will change later but so far like in in episode one she has like one you know she she looks really badass with a, a gun you know and then there's the line of you know. Tonomi says, it's okay, we like chasing people, and she says, no, we like catching people, and she gets some, some, I, I honestly don't remember everything about the action scene at the, in the climax of, of episode one, but I believe she got some pretty cool action there. Episode two, she's, you know, I think she's supposed to be helping Carrie with a C, but she's like hitting that thing that, I, I have no idea what it's called, but you know, it's um, it's for people who want to, I guess it's not called sparring when you're by yourself, but like, you know, practice different hits. You know, it's, 
yeah, and and then in this one she's like, I can knock you out. Is <laughs> yeah, really appreciate her presence. Like she's, you know, her her attitude makes up for her relatively small frame, and which I believe is the the point. And then we have the the great line. Could you maybe not break everything this time? I'm not gonna promise that. And let's see. Yeah, and, and they tell me, you know, think about something stressful and we see Halloween and we you know, they, they show some of the bedtime story again. And David actually saw, although I guess it's maybe a hallucination or, or what's the word? Maybe he changed a memory to, to repre repressed memory, something like that, you know. But yeah, he seemingly saw the angriest boy in the world. And yeah, no wonder that really terrified him. And Lenny, another fantastic appearance, you know, and I can't help but notice, it is at this point a pattern. Now, you know, since she died in episode one, when she reappears in the present, she says something that really makes David paranoid. So I wonder if she is maybe like a personification of his paranoia or something. Please don't spoil it in the comments. But yeah, um, and yeah, she suggests that Amy, I don't think I'm going to repeat, but yeah. If you, if you know what cornhole means, you realize exactly where... Yeah, the kind of image Lenny is, is conjuring in David. If not, uh, I suppose you could look it up, but it's, even if you don't know, the image is already rather unpleasant. And... Let's see. And, and it is the kind of thing that, you know, um, yeah... One of, you know, as a protective guy myself, that is the kind of, that's that's sometimes where our mind goes. If someone we really care about, especially if it's a woman, is, you know, yeah, in, in a situation where we're worried what might happen to her. And let's see, we have the... Yeah, and, and, you know, David's powers, again, you know, start to go out of control. And Sid walks into the room, even though both of the Carries try to talk her out of it. And the, the yeah, we see, you know, this, this incredibly bright light, and it's like, like they're both floating, and... Then we see this sort of, I'm going to, un until I know exactly what it is, I'm going to be refer referring to it as astral projection. You know, and, yeah, we see the, you know, yeah, they they are actually, you know, not not physically, but, but spiritually they are, you know, this, this appears to be what is actually, yeah, yeah, it must be, because the eye is, is, able to, to see, to, to perceive them, and almost grabs. So, so yeah, you know, they're, they're seeing the interrogation of Amy. And, yeah, some, some really harsh, you know, the, the really, really devastating to, to hear this thing of, you know, which we, we don't actually know yet how they know this, but I guess... Maybe 
I, I suppose the most, if, if I had to guess right now, I would say I believe that the, um, ah, what's the word, they, um, it's because I'm losing track of the division, so I'm just going to be calling it division. They have access to the therapy notes of David, and he has has shared that. But you know, seemingly, you know, she she saw evidence of him using. Or yeah, there were things that we now know as evidence of his powers. And when they they said that he was mentally ill, she didn't speak up and say, "Well, I experienced stuff too." And, you know, obviously this, you know, this can make her feel ex extremely guilty. And it's, you know, sadly, a lot of people who experience loved ones, you know, getting diagnoses, mental health diagnoses, yeah, they, you know, they, they struggle to, what's the word? You know, they're, they're kind of worried that they too will be negatively affected and let's see yeah and and you know so I, I think I think the the guy saying is is the character called Brubaker says you know he was a god and you let them turn him into a fool and it's very clear you know in in part he's saying that to, to make her feel bad so she'll talk but this is also like he I suppose it's either he worships powerful mutants or he greatly fears them. It's it's probably but but you know he's not neutral. He's definitely yeah. And yeah, really really scary when the eye is actually able to perceive them and almost manages to grab them. And we are told afterwards, you know, you can never go back there because you surprise them this time, next time they'll be waiting for you, and either they'll kill you there, or they'll follow you back and kill all of us. And, yeah, when they... When... When, um, when David and Sid make it back... You know, they, they come to and they're, you know, in the water and, and yeah. Um, I wonder if that's just one of the things, when he astro projects, he ends up in water. I suppose maybe it's the fact that he, because he left very abruptly to get away from the eye. Maybe it's a bit like, you know, if you're running really fast... And, and you're not 100% awake or you're I don't know, a little drunk or something, you're maybe going to trip over. Maybe it's that. He, you know, he was trying to, to get all the way back to summer or, or yeah, back inside of Summerland and, and accidentally tripped and fell into the water. Some, that, that sort of thing, you know, metaphorically speaking. And, yeah, we, we learn about, that's Oliver's voice. If you've ordered coffee or taken the elevator, you've heard his voice. Great story. And and yeah, Melanie straight out comes out and say, you know, says, I don't know if if I'm able to help you. I'm worried that I'm making you worse. And that's again, that's something that is also in reality, like when it comes to mental health. You know, not everything done to try to help the patient is actually making things better. And let's see. Yeah, and she brings up sedation and does assure him. I, I'm not saying like unconscious, unconscious. I'm saying, you know, just like enough that it's not so dangerous. And, yeah, you know, famous last words, that's, that's where it goes wrong. The fact that he was, because that's the thing, like, they've gone into his memory several times by this point. Did that, did that make it sound like I'm bored? I'm, I'm not. I'm just saying, you know, so far, 
each time he's been able to wake up. You know, but he also used his powers and he's struggling to control his powers and it is actually dangerous for them, you know. But this time he doesn't wake up because he because of the sedation, you know. That's the only thing that was completely different from the other time. So yeah, that's that's not great. And you know, I, I appreciate the little moment where, you know, there's there's the bit where like yeah, Sid manages to wake herself up, but Tonami was not able to, you know, he's he's woken up by by Sid, even and and he was also not able to get them back out of there. You know, suddenly his powers are not working. To you know, that was also really effective. A bit of of yeah, very very quite scary. And yeah, several people say no to to Sid wanting to to go into the you know once he's sedated and they're let's see and and she seems to have a nightmare about the the yellow eyed I'm always getting the name wrong the devil with the yellow eyes that's it and yeah, you know, he's also awake and he explains, you know, if you go with, you're going to see things, you're not going to feel the same way about me. And, you know, she says, do you love me? Well, then it's, you know, then it's settled, then it's easy. Nothing else matters, I think is, is the exact. I, I really appreciate it. This is, I don't know that many shows that this beautifully manages to straddle the balance because sometimes I don't know that I would ever I, I don't think there's been anything so far that is outright cheesy but there's definitely been moments that in in lesser hands than than these writers and directors could have ended up that way but it also manages snark you know there's I, I don't know that many pieces of media that this does this well at managing you know usually one of them overwhelms the other and love the window transition just you know they're they're like okay let's let's begin and the cam and and we see before the camera even goes through the window we see you know yeah on the on the yeah through the window so just very nicely done because a cut would imply that time passes if something happens we know it's not literally happening right outside the window but that implies no it was like it was immediate you know like for some reason, I can't snap my fingers properly, so I try not to do it on camera because it's embarrassing that I can't snap my fingers properly. But yeah, brilliant way to to get across. No, they're just immediately in there. And yeah, um, David is there as you know the the child version of himself, and you know Sid. <laughs> Her powers don't work inside these memories, so, you know, she can finally actually hug him. And there's this hi, adorable little moment, just which is very nice, because so far, a lot of the time when we see David as a child, there's something really scary going on. And so, so it is later in this episode. Later in this scene, in fact. And, yeah. It's a memory within a memory, so very, very Inception, very nicely done. Doesn't feel like a ripoff at all. You know, in in that it's dreams within dreams. Here it's memories within. And I appreciate it's it's an interesting detail that I, I that is something I hope they'll explain. Sid can see what David can inside these memories, even though neither Melanie nor Tonami can, you know, like you would think, I'm not saying that, I'm, I'm looking forward to finding out the answer, I, I hope there's an answer, I'm not saying the, the following is not a criticism, but you might think, oh, you know, all four of them, you know, yeah, all four or only David, but both David and Sid, you know, because 
yeah, I. Is it possible that a little part of him is still inside, like like mentally, because they did technically before they swapped bodies, they swapped brains, or is it the other way around? Some something like that, you know. So, yeah, there there was some of yeah yeah. First they swapped bodies, later they swapped brains, you know. Later, the the yeah, and. Um, let's see. Yeah, love the long take. Like, incredibly nicely done. I, the long takes are some of the best parts of of the show, so far of these first three episodes. Just, yeah. Um, you know, and and this thing of moving between these memories that obviously weren't quite as connected as they appear, as they're you know running through them like this, and. I like the detail that, you know, I, yeah, so one of the memories, Sid walks in on David having sex, and, you know, there's like a second where she's like, oh, wasn't supposed to see that, you know, but she does, like, she can't help but look a little <laughs> which, on the one hand, technically speaking, David and Sid are dating, so it's essentially a visual version of the sexual history conversation, and also, it, I don't, <laughs> seemingly Sid has never had sex with another person because she can't directly physically touch. And she said, you know, and, and, you know, before you say, oh, you know, what about a full body condom? She did say, you know, even just being close, even if they're not directly touching, it's unpleasant for her. So... Yeah, she might be a little curious, and I mean, I'm not judging, but I can imagine this might be the first time that people have had sex in front of her and not offered her, you know, a spot. And <laughs> yeah, um, young David is is by the bed. <laughs> yeah, that's. There's an image. And, yeah, the angriest boy appears and, and you know, Sid says, you want to play, you know, maybe you should play hide and seek. Do you have a fair place to hide? You know, very clever and, yeah, manages to, to climb in the little thing and, and, you know, yeah, behind them comes the... Uh, I forget if it's still the angriest boy or if it becomes the devil with the yellow eyes, but yeah, um, very effective, very very scary. And finally, you know, she does. Sid does manage to to wake up, but the others are are still asleep. And I I appreciate her having to wake them up without touching them directly, even even not touching the skin directly. So she's like, you know, hit, hitting the, the bed or, or couch that they're on. And you know, she picks up a, a pillow and hits that next to it. Just, yeah. And yeah, um, Melanie still inside, you know, hears this, this whimpering noise and, you know, opens the book, goes through the parts that we've already seen. Then she reaches this part where apparently the angriest boy in the world burnt down the town after chopping his mother's head off. So yeah, um, and and you know not long after she says, or, or I forget if it's her or maybe it's it. Someone says, "I'm I don't think these are memories," which really really hope that that book is is not an um an actual memory but just like you know an, a nightmare vision of uh, a bedtime story that's a bit too intense because like we're in babadook territory with that like my god and you know the the thing crush the, the book crushes her hand and she pulls it out it's all mangled and when she comes to it actually takes a second and says no 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 look look your your hand is fine it was it's it was just a memory 
And then, yeah, then we get the line, I don't think those are memories. <laughs> Which is very, yeah, very ominous. And they, they know that they cannot wake up David. And it's just, yeah, holy crap. I'm really good. It must have been just unbearable to have to wait a week between episodes back when this first aired. I'm really glad I'm going to... If, if I'll try to watch one tomorrow, we'll we'll see. It's gonna be a long day, but if if not, it'll be it'll be Tuesday. I'm really, yeah. And yeah, so some IMDb trivia for this episode: in the yellow room, the yellow the blah, the window is a circle with an X in the middle, just like the symbol for Professor Xavier and the X Men. In the sedated memory work sequence, we see David stealing his session tapes out of the drawer in the therapist's office. One of the names on the tapes of, in the drawer is Mr. Plaza, a reference to Aubrey Plaza, who plays Lenny. That's right, the character was, ri was originally meant to be male until Plaza read for the show. However, she insisted on keeping the dialogue the same as it was originally written. That is, yeah, I... I did kind of get that feeling. Some of the some of the dialogue really does feel like, yeah, you know, I. It it is very interesting that the the dialogue, there is a, a bit of like, you know, once you, in in episode two the the thing with the stove, which I appreciate in one of the dreams here, we we actually see the stove used, and you know, yeah. Lenny managed to sell it despite making the Greek think, are, are you telling me I should I should stick my head in that thing? What is, what is wrong with you? Are you trying to sell this or are you trying to get me to kick you off my property? You know, but yeah, she did manage to, to sell it and um, yeah, you know, she, I, I believe the she used the word finger bang. You know, so, so, yeah, that, at the very least, implies, uh, you know, maybe, maybe Lenny, you know, uh, yeah, could be several things, could be pan, you know, bi, trans, non-binary, a combination of those, uh, you know, but, but yeah, it's, it's very interesting. I'm, has anyone referred to Lenny as as her or she? I'm I'm not 100% sure I can remember. I think they they usually refer to Lenny as David's friend when they say her. They're because because like in episode one they they said her and I was like oh Lenny but no it appeared to be they were they were referring to to Sid not Lenny. But yeah. Um, I'm glad that that Aubrey got her way on on that because it it definitely is an, an interesting element to to the show. Yeah, you know, hopefully can can I don't know if it did, you know, but but there's a chance that it actually might increase empathy for LGBTQ+ plus individuals for the community. Uh, back to trivia. Second time the series has used the term mutant. The first was in chapter one. Huh. During the Halloween scene where David is a child, his name can be seen written on a sign in the background. The clock in the torture room Amy is in has no hands on it. Which, obviously, you you could say... Well, then why have a clock in there if it doesn't, you know, it's not even a broken clock. It is never right. Why have it in there? Because it reminds Amy, it reminds the person being tortured that, you know, I mean, I mean, it's sort of, it somewhat implies time is meaningless here. You're never getting out of here. Those sorts of things, you know, it's, it's not, we don't, the, 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 the brain, the human brain does not like seeing of a clock that is like that either like just doesn't show like think about how people like even if it's like even if no one is using a clock or a watch if someone notices that you know it's it's not showing the right time that you know starts to to be you know that's that's someone uncomfortable 
And if you then say, oh, you know, I don't think the battery works anymore, then they're like, you've got to replace it or get rid of it or something. You know, that's just not, I don't know, maybe I just know people who are too obsessed with stuff like that. But I do think there is something to that. But yeah, um, hopefully I'll be able to do an episode tomorrow. I'm definitely going to see if I can't make time for it. But otherwise, yeah, um, Tuesday will be... I'm thinking it's called Chapter 4. It is called Chapter 4. It seems like the... the you know the massive fountain of of creativity that the show was was drawn from the creativity ran out just as they were getting to to episode titles i'm kidding i don't think it's like a problem or anything and yeah until we meet again unhand the reptile space captain <laughs>